All right, now let's look at the last period in the Mesozoic, the Cretaceous. If I look a little different, it's because I'm wearing my uh, martial arts dobak. I'm actually in between, uh, I'm at the U.S. National Championships. I'm actually in between uh, rounds right now, so I'm trying to sneak in as much work as I can. I'm trying. All right, in any case, let's get into this. Um, so yeah, the Cretaceous, it's starting to look more like modern day what we know um, uh, the world to look like, where the continents start to move about where they are. So this is what North America is looking like kind of towards the end of the Cretaceous. <clears throat> Again, K for Cretaceous, no major glaciation going on. So what was going on? So we got the first flowering plants appear and rapidly diversify. The uh, Rocky Mountains we know and love now are starting to rise from the interior seaway. There's a max extinction at the end of the Cretaceous. It's the one that kills off uh, the dinosaurs, or at least uh, the extinction itself kills off the dinosaurs. But it's not quite what most people uh, think. Um, current thinking holds that about 66 million years ago to end the Cretaceous, a large asteroid hit, and then all the dinosaurs died. Yes and no. So these are the organisms we're starting to get into. Uh, uh, Iguanodons, Parasaurolophilus have the big horn here. Uh, Truodons, very smart little ones. Triceratops, Tyrannosaurus rex, Velociraptors, etc. Um, so yeah, so we get the first flowers. Finally, we get you know we had plants, we had trees. Now we finally get flowers. Um, once they appeared, flowering plants became the dominant plant life and remain so today on Earth. More than 90% of all, all land plant species are, are flowering angiosperms. Um, they've adapted to mountains, to desert, and every terrain in between. Um, and, the, the, and the reason for that is because the, the seeds are tiny and can be dispersed widely in many different ways. Wind can blow these flowering plant seeds you know, quite easily. Um, they can be transported in rivers and streams. Um, if uh, an animal walk, a bear walks past a flowering plant in the in the woods, you know some of those um, bird seeds can get stuck to it and then can finally just fall off, or your socks, um, or you know the seeds that are in fruit are sometimes eaten by things and then pooped out, and the pooped out seeds can grow plants. These are just flowers. Yeah, nothing special. So we start to see the, the flowering plants again in the fossil record uh, as we get into the, the Cretaceous. Um, and then that leads us to kind of the big event in the Cretaceous. You read all these dinosaurs, right? We got plants. And it leads us to the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. It really marks the end of the Cretaceous period. About 60 to 70 percent of all life uh, on Earth it dies off. Um, however, um, the, the biggest thing that goes away is the dinosaurs. Now, um, again, most people know, oh, there was an asteroid impact and everything died. Again, these take a long, long amounts of time. So this extinction lasted about 300,000 years, K for kilo or 1,000 years. So about 300,000 years this extinction took. Yes, the asteroid hitting the Earth didn't really help the scenario, but there was other things also going on at the time. Volcanic activity, tectonic activity. So actually all of this played a part. The asteroid just kind of sealed the deal. So the ex there was already, you know, stuff going on. It's just that asteroid kind of came at a really bad time. It's like you got a bunch of bills and then you think you can't get any worse and then you get a, a bigger bill in the mail. You're like, oh, that's kind of like what the asteroid was. It was that 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 final bill that broke your bank account again not the largest extinction but definitely the the most famous uh, it's one, the one when the dinosaurs died out amongst many other species um, again uh, asteroid impact uh, volcanic um, uh, 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 eruptions like co2 going into the atmosphere climate change plate tectonics or even insects spreading deadly disease now that we have insects it, it, it was probably a factor of all of those. Again, just that asteroid sealed the deal. Um, yeah, so this chart kind of shows temperature fluctuations, volcanic activity. I mean, yeah, there was a number of things going on. But the asteroid, it, again, it kind of sealed the deal. So the asteroid that hit Earth um, just off the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, um, 
it, the asteroid itself was somewhere between 6 to 12 miles wide, and it created a, a crater 120 miles wide. That's a big hole. It would have been traveling north of 22,000 miles per hour when it hit the uh, atmosphere and subsequently hit the Earth real quick then. Um, would have kicked up tons of debris up into the atmosphere. The dust would have gone into the atmosphere, blocked out the sun for an extended period of time. So if, you know, volcanic gases or climate change or anything prior, or deadly insects prior to this didn't get you, and, the, and you didn't di die directly from the asteroid impact, then now you're blocking out the sun. If you block out the sun, then the things that need the sun, like plants, would die. If the plants die, the things that eat the plants would die. Then the things that eat the things that eat the plants would die. So, yeah. Uh, when that dust literally settled, um, it actually created a layer worldwide called the, the KP boundary, the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary, or it used to be known as the KT boundary for Cretaceous Tertiary boundary. Um, but this, we find this layer of, um, of, of clay uh, that is made up of the settled dust from all of the stuff that got kicked up. So here's where the um, asteroid hit. Um, that we know. Um, we found this out oh, it was like 20 or 30 years ago. And so it hit right around here. This is the, the crater. It's, it's really unseen um, because it kind of hit offshore. And there, but one, one indication, not only did we find the crater itself, but on land in Mexico, we have, there's a lot of these cenotes, these sinkholes um, that kind of form this circle around this part of the Yucatan uh, Peninsula. And then when we did some core samples and drilling out here, this is where we eventually found, found the crater. So this kind of marks the, the edge of that, that crater, these sinkholes where the, the uh, area kind of collapsed in on itself. So that term, the KT boundary, will probably stick around for a while. You might hear KT boundary or KP boundary. Again, K for Cretaceous, that's the end of the Cretaceous, and T for tertiary. However, um, we don't really use the term tertiary too, too much. Um, you might see it in lab on some maps, and, and it is still on the, the geologic time scale. But I guess the Paleogene is a more um, accepted uh, period instead of tertiary, so now it's a KP. So rocks deposited during this uh, the Cretaceous and the Paleogene periods are separated, we find, again, by this thin clay layer that's visible at sites all around the world. And what's interesting about this layer of clay that separates Cretaceous and Paleogene rocks is that in that clay layer there's a high amount of this element, ir iridium, which is a radioactive element, and, and that is much more common that uh, iridium, the element, is much more common in asteroids than it is in Earth's crust rocks. Therefore, an impacting asteroid, if it hit hard enough and just obliterated, would kick iridium-rich dust into the atmosphere, all of that would settle uh, to create this clay layer. So we're finding a lot of iridium in this um, this clay layer between the older Cretaceous and younger Paleogene rocks. So that's that KP or KT boundary. That's that iridium rich clay layer that we find all over the world. We can find it, we'll find it almost all over the world. If we're looking between Cretaceous, if we have uninterrupted Cretaceous and, and Paleogene rocks, right there, that iridium rich layer. So that um, extinction was much quicker than the Triassic Jurassic one, and it's the one most people know about. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the Cretaceous. The dinosaurs are dead. Um, so sad to see them go. But these little guys here are going to start to rise now as we get into the Cenozoic for their, our last two remaining uh, units. Oops. We have finally, again, now have plants, flowering plants, I should say, excuse me, on Earth. Uh, everything is dynamite. So that finishes our conversation on the on the Mesozoic, and then we'll get into the um, uh, Cenozoic here in the next couple of units. You can see here's Tertiary, but we actually broke up Tertiary to Paleogene and Neogene. Uh, we'll get more into that into Cenozoic, but that's why it's now called the KP boundary, not the KT boundary. All right, that was 4.1% of the Earth's history. There's no code for this one. Um, no secret word, you know, I'm, I trust you at this point. Yeah, get your work done. Until next time.